trying to make it short. Uh, my name is Yi Jian Zhen, uh, so I'm from the Department of Water Resources, and our department focuses on uh, applying Earth observation and geoinformation science for uh, understanding, monitoring, predicting, but also uh, on the sustainable use and management of water resources. So uh, briefly, the mission and the strategy, our mission is to create and uh, share knowledge in satellite hydrology for solving uh, societal relevant problems in uh, water resources and the environment. And uh, the strategy is to interpret uh, remote sensing and field observation with a physically based uh, uh, models. So we have uh, three pillars to support this uh, strategy. Uh, basically, we develop uh, Earth observation uh, models, or let's say the remote sensing models or process-based models. We also build uh, or established Earth observation sites. I think this is quite unique in ITC. Um, and we work closely with uh, computing uh, facilities or infrastructure and in science solutions. A little bit more on uh, different uh, pillars. So, for example, for the model part, we have uh, in-house uh, models for different components. We have uh, open, uh, for open water, for evaporation, for vegetation and subsoil. And like a circuit mentioned, the Eco Extreme Mail will focus on uh, introduction, the last two uh, models, vegetation and the soil. We also established long-term Earth observation sites. Um, uh, it is used as kind of validation site for different satellite uh, missions, but also can be used uh, at the same time uh, for re research and education. For example, uh, just some picture here show you we have observation site in Vilu, which is the uh, Spielberg forest site. And then we also have site in Anskade at the Twente region, also abroad in Kenya, Spain, and China. In terms of existing tools, we have uh, geoneticas for rapid access um, to satellite data, and then we also have two both uh, earways. But then this afternoon, we will have a presentation from maybe Bas uh, Earways Pi, but also uh, on the GeoServe by Lulov. So we have a local uh, Linux server in the department, but also using Clip as a platform for research and education. And thanks a lot to the Science Center, where we have access to uh, Surf Sala Super uh, Computing uh, Center. But we also have access to uh, Jasmine and also to uh, Yulish Super Computing uh, Center uh, in Germany. Okay, then uh, in coming slides, I will briefly introduce this uh, Eco Extreme Mail project, which is an uh, e science project. Uh, it is about understanding the drought response of uh, ecosystem functioning under extreme climate with a physics aware machine learning. So, this is a kind of a close departmental uh, collaboration, but also uh, a close discipline. I would like to acknowledge groups of people, but uh, for the sake of time, I will just do it briefly. So we have ITC team uh, focused on understanding process and uh, machine learning. So uh, Luo Wu is also here. And also together with Michael Young, we will focus on machine learning parts. And then from water resources department, we focus on uh, process part. We have a group of uh, PhD and the postdoc uh, students on uh, soil plum assistance, uh, considering different components. And then uh, we're also using uh, CLIP as a computing uh, platform but also with the help of eScience Center uh, group uh, 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 colleagues, uh, they help provide eScience uh, solution and access to HPC uh, facility. So altogether, we are developing a digital twin. So this is mentioned a few times for soil plant er, uh, system, not yet earth, but it just focus on soil and the plant. Uh, the science question we want to address uh, in this project is the following. So we know the droughts and the heat waves are impacting, uh, let's say, the uh, ecosystem functioning in terms of water energy and the carbon fluxes. And we try to understand this uh, drought response uh, in terms of uh, plant hydraulics and also the um, uh, photosynthetic activities, which is very important. And let's also, I mean, photosynthesis is the fundamental process Basically, we are uh, standing our, our foot on the ground. And then also trying to understand the uh, spatial and the temporal evolution of this drought uh, response. Uh, there are threefold uh, in terms of uh, research objectives. So the first one, we will couple two models, one uh, soil and one uh, vegetation. It is, I just want to mention that some of these slides are coming from uh, Sala, so thanks a lot for that. Um, uh, so covering the models for the digital twin of soil plum uh, system, and then we're also trying to using uh, physical machine learning uh, techniques, or let's say algorithms, to approximate the uh, original uh, model because the process model can take long time to run. 
Uh, at the same time, we're also considering uh, a data assimilation technique to incorporate Earth observation data for monitoring the uh, drought response of ecosystem. A little bit uh, on uh, process level, so in terms of understanding the drought response um, of ecosystem, we basically want to understand how the water uh, transport from the soil to the root, stem, and the leaf and landscape from the stomata. And then we also want to understand how this water transport process will impact the photosynthetic activities. So uh, as I said, we need two models basically, one for vegetation, one for uh, soil. Uh, for vegetation, we are using scope model. Uh, uh, most of you may be um, aware of this model. So it's about uh, the forward simulation of fluorescence and the reflectance as sensed by the satellite, but at the same time also photosynthetic uh, activities and also energy balance at the leaf level, but also canopy level, along also radiative, uh, radiative transfer uh, process. For the soil part, we are using STEMIPS model, uh, and then uh, we can simulate dynamic root growth, and then providing soil moisture, soil temperature, you can use to calculate root water uptake, but also to calculate the hydraulic uh, root system schemes across the soil plant system. Um, so these two models actually developed since 2009 separately. So it is around, uh, well, if you add land together, it's more than uh, 20 years uh, knowledge accumulated here. However, uh, maybe some of you already mentioned that, I mean, this is really science oriented. So for example, particularly for STEMIS model, uh, it is not sustainable <laughs> at all. So we really rely on e-science centers to help to make it uh, sustainable. Uh, just briefly, um, indicating the power of this, uh, uh, this e-science uh, project. So when we first couple stemoscope, we need one and a half uh, war time hour for one month simulation period. And then because we are part of this GVEX Plumber 2 uh, project, land service model benchmarking evaluation project, we need to run 170 flux net sites, which is in total 1,532 site years. And then you need already, I mean, using original version, you need uh, more than three years to finish the computation, which is already longer than the eco extreme male project duration itself. And then if you want to run it globally at the one kilometer, it is even more ridiculous. It's more than 300,000 years. But now, I mean, with the help of uh, eco extreme male project with the eScience Center uh, colleagues, we are able to run uh, this e stemoscope for 170 sites in five days. So this is already 230 times faster. Uh, so like I mentioned, we really rely on e-science uh, solutions uh, and also HPC infrastructure um, you, you have. Uh, basically, briefly, for, uh, for perspective, uh, I think some, some of you already mentioned and also after coffee break, a uh, lot will be uh, presented in terms of this for perspective. So the best practice in software development, uh, we are currently continuously working on uh, documentation and make the uh, core uh, code, let's say, open source. Currently it's MATLAB, but we also have Octave version now. And then following the FAIR principle and then trying to facilitate the automatic testing and also this review process. So when you have individual uh, development of different branches, we also have a review uh, process to make it merge with the main branch. Uh, in terms of efficient computing, you already see the power, so we are continually uh, optimizing the code. Still, uh, perhaps the process-based model, even you optimize it, is still uh, not suitable for running at a global scale. So we're also uh, building an emulator, and uh, machine learning uh, techniques will kick in here. And then because we want to run it at a global scale, you also need uh, very efficient data handling. So uh, there are some data processing utility has been uh, developed, but also uh, the data assimilation techniques as mentioned. So a little bit uh, brief highlight, uh, or let's say in terms of the current progress. So the runtime has been reduced as, as you see, and the stemoscope has been run uh, parallelly on a surf supercomputer. The, the uh, reusability of the codes has been improved, and then the um, data pre-processing utility has been developed in Python. And, and users can run the model in Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we continuously developing uh, documentation and also uh, guides. So this, again, from Salah uh, slides, you may notice it uh, uh, from Einstein Center colleagues. And then we're also following the best practice, as mentioned before. Uh, one very um, 
a good point here is um, there are some regular workshop organized for PhD students and postdoc. So for them to be familiar with the best practice and also to be familiar with the collaborative workflow. Just a screen sh screenshot to show you that uh, currently the stemoscope has been undergoing very active development. Uh, this is currently more than 36 uh, issues uh, there, but also you already have more than 56 uh, pull requests has been uh, pushed. Uh, example notebook on stemoscope model, so you can run it uh, three options, once using executable file, using MATLAB source code, and also Octave. Uh, example, for example, is actually quite straightforward. Huh? So you just need to import this Pi stemoscope library, and then you define the uh, path, um, to a uh, path to the configuration file, and you define the path to the uh, forcing file and also identify the number of time steps. Then you are all set, you can run it. Uh, and then you also uh, can save all the output to the uh, output files. We are also working towards this uh, web-based global eco extreme mail uh, platform. So it's very straightforward as well. So all the model inputs will be wrapped up in data pre-processing utility. Dynamic uh, server is the scope, uh, stem scope and then we are uh, going to use the uh, post-processing uh, utility to visualize the model output. Last but not least, uh, eco extreme Mail project is actually contributing to this new project, Wonder, which represents uh, water use and drought response of agriculture and the nature ecosystems. So we have a big consortium, including uh, 19 partners. Uh, I will not go through and be, be, uh, due to the uh, uh, sake of the time. Okay, this looks a little bit messy, but uh, we are science-oriented, and then we need the e-science uh, center's help um, for making it uh, um, organized. But just briefly, we're trying to use a digital twin approach to, to understand uh, the soil plant atmosphere continuum from bedrock to atmosphere. So it's compared to uh, JC's talk, you're from surface to deep, we are from, from shallow soil to the atmosphere. And then we are using eco extreme mail, uh, or let's say uh, the stemoscope as the uh, soil uh, plant system, and then we coupled it with a model flow, uh, uh, let's say um, groundwater flow model, is a BMI, which is a basic model interface uh, exposed. And then we are working on stemoscope to be BMI exposed as well. So the coupling between the two models will be very uh, straightforward. And there are also different components developed. Uh, layer. So coupling infrastructure are there, we just need to put the land together. So there are maybe some potential opportunity to, uh, to collaborate further with the eScience Center. So I would like to borrow this uh, figure to, um, to conclude my talk. As you see from my previous slide, uh, eScience Center is really empowering the academic research uh, uh, with uh, pioneering software, which are developed and maintained by research software engineers. So with that, thank you very much, and thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Bijan, for this very nice uh, presentation. I think it was also a very nice uh, connection uh, to, to the next session. So um, maybe if one qu quick question. Yes? Yeah, thanks a lot for your uh, question. This is uh, actually links to um, what Circum already mentioned at the beginning in terms of a community, uh, community uh, uh, um, let's say, uh, develop, development, right? Um, or community learning. But uh, currently what we are doing, uh, particularly with uh, Sara and uh, colleagues, we are trying, because we are really, for example, a group of uh, PhD students and postdoc, they are working on process level, so they, uh, trying to crunch the science parts, uh, but then, I mean, for example, if you build a stemoscope um, uh, with a different, uh, let's say, style of uh, programming, then at the end, if you want to integrate them all together, 
this will take a lot of troubles, right? So now the regular workshop is trying to, uh, let's say, help them to understand how to do this collaborative uh, workflow and how to follow the best practice. For example, we are currently using MATLAB not to get a shift into Python. Uh, could be another project, as Stella mentioned, but uh, um, for the MATLAB, myself was using it, I mean, uh, many, many years ago, but at that time, I used a lot of global variables. And this is one of the uh, um, uh, pain we have to <laughs> have to take care uh, pain points. Uh, so in this sense, I would say this regular workshop is help you, uh, help to uh, educate us and educate the PhD students towards this uh, best uh, practice. Um, yeah, I hope that is, we can talk more <laughs> on how this will impact our progress. Yes, yeah, actually, we, we, we had the coffee break for that purpose. Yes. So, uh, and I suggest we go for the coffee break because we are a little bit late now in the program. Um, thank you very much for the, for the question. Thank you very much for, for, the, for the presentation.